In today's lesson, we are going to start the first learning about how to solve trig equations. We will learn about this topic over the next three days. When you're solving trig equations, there are a couple different strategies that we will use. We're going to use basic algebra and trig identities like we did back in chapter 5. So I know at the time it might have seemed a little pointless when we were doing all of those puzzles. However, all of those skills that we learned will be very helpful in chapter 6. We will do things such as factoring or using quadratic formula. At times, we might square both sides and substitute with the Pythagorean identity. One of the hardest things to remember is this second bullet point, which is that you need to think about the region you are given to find the solutions. And this is not the same as the inverse restrictions. And then lastly, you want to plug in your answers to check. Now, you don't have to check every single answer. What you want to do is you want to check things, for example, when functions can be undefined. That's a big thing we need to check for. And then also, if you squared both sides. So these are the two times when we really need to check those solutions that we get. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at how these strategies will play out. In this first problem, this is similar to solving a basic linear equation. This equation is comparable to if I would have given you 2a minus 1 equals 0. In this case, we're just going to isolate the variable and then go from there. So here, if I have 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 to each side, giving me 2 cosine of x equals 1, and then divide by 2. Now at this point, now that I've gotten my trig function by itself, I want to look at my angle restrictions. So what this is telling me is that I want to find all angles, not just the angles that are in the inverse restrictions for cosine, but all angles that anywhere on that first circle in 0 to 360 would have a cosine ratio of 1 half. And we know that this happens in quadrants 1 and 4, and this would happen at our 60 degree and our 300 degree angle. In question two, um, a tempting strategy that people want to do is to divide both sides by sine. And you cannot ever divide away a trig function. There are a few scenarios where it won't end up impacting you, but in most cases it will cause you to lose solution choices. So just don't ever do it. Instead, what you want to do is you want to set the equation equal to zero. So we're going to subtract sine on each side, or subtract sine to the left side, giving me sine of x, tan of x, minus sine of x equals zero. And at this point, sine is a common factor, so I can factor it out. And now here, I have two little mini problems that I want to solve. The first problem is, when does sine of x equal zero? And the second one is, when does tangent of x minus 1 equal 0, or when does tangent of x equal 1? Now again, we are looking for all angles in 0 to 360. So the sine function equals 0 at 0 degrees and 180 degrees, and the tangent function equals 1 at 45 degrees and 225 degrees. So this problem has four solutions. In problem 3, we see a quadratic. Now, just like when we learned to factor quadratics with trig functions in chapter 5, you want to use the same strategy here. So you want to think that this problem is similar to a squared plus 3a minus 4. And if I gave you that problem, you would factor it into a plus 4, a minus 1. So using that same strategy, we will say that tangent of theta plus multiplied with tangent of theta minus 1 equals 0. And then now, these are my two mini problems that I want to solve. Now, finding when tangent of theta equals negative 4, it's not something that we know. It's not on the unit circle. We know that it's possible because tangent can be anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the calculator. And what we'll, we'll plug in is the tan inverse of negative 4, and the calculator is going to give me the answer of, um, and we want to be in radians now because now we're in interval 0 to 2 pi, so the calculator is going to give me the answer of negative 1.326.
Now there's a problem with this answer because recall that tan inverse gives us an angle from negative pi halves to pi halves. And that's great, however, I want my answers to be from zero to two pi. So I need to take this answer and I need to fix it. I know that tangent is negative in quadrants two and four. And so if I think about it, this angle right here is going to be down here in quadrant four and up here in quadrant two. So the way that I'm going to get my quadrant two answer is I will just add pi to this. And if I add pi, that gives me my first answer of 1.816. And to go ahead and get that answer that's in quadrant four, I just need to add two pi to get my positive coterminal angle, giving me 4.957. There are my first two answers. And then my other two answers occur when tangent equals one. And we know this from the unit circle. So we know that those two answers are pi fourths and pi five pi fours. And notice that in this case, we have two answers which are exact, meaning that they are reduced fractions, and the other two answers are rounded decimals, and that's just because of the types of values that they were. All right, in question four, we're going to go ahead and factor out our common factor of two, giving us two sine squared theta minus one. And then from here, now we want to set each factor equal to zero. Since 2 equaling 0 doesn't make sense, that does not result in any solutions. My next factor, if I set this equal to 0, 2 sine squared theta, um, I'm just going to add the 1 over, so equals 1. And then now we just continue isolating the sine of theta. And we get that the sine of theta equals, now we square root both sides, and when you square root both sides of an equation, don't forget we need a plus or minus sign. So sine of theta is equaling to the positive or negative root two over two. And we should know that the sine um, function equals root two over two at all of my pi fourths angles. And since I have both the positive and negative, I'm going to have four answers here. And those answers will be all of the um, multiples of the pi fourth. So we'll have pi fourths, we'll have three pi fourths, 5 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. Go ahead and try this problem on your own and unpause the video once you have your solution to check your work. In this case, I'm going to set each of those factors equal to zero and isolate the trig function. On the left, I get that cosine of theta equals negative root three over two, and that happens at five pi six and seven pi six. On the right, cosecant of theta equals root two at pi fourths and three pi fourths. In this problem, we have a quadratic, and if we were to go ahead and try to start factoring it, we would find that this is not factorable. So when problems are not factorable, and I usually put NF for this, we need to use the quadratic formula. And for that, I usually put QF. Now, if you happen to have a graphing calculator that has a solver feature or poly -simult, you are more than welcome to use those features. However, I know that not everybody does have a graphing calculator, so if you don't own a graphing calculator, we're going to need to re recall our quadratic formula. And for the quadratic formula, your variable will equal opposite b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that is for your ax squared plus bx plus c equaling to 0. All right, now if we look at example six, in this problem, my x, or my variable, is actually sine theta. So when I get my solutions, they're not going to be equal to x or to theta. The solutions from quadratic formula are actually going to equal sine theta. So make sure you write that, because it's really easy to forget that in the end. So sine of theta equals the opposite of b, since b is negative 2, we'll have positive 2 plus or minus square root and then b squared 4 minus, and then 4 times 5 times negative 1, all over 2 times 5. And we go ahead and we put this in our graphing calculator, and we end up getting two answers for the sine of theta. We get that sine of theta equals 0.68994, negative 
nine, nine. So now I need to go ahead and do sine inverse for both of those values. Let's check our angle restriction and we want our angles to be in zero to 360. So make sure you reset your mode of your calculator to degrees and you will do the sine inverse of 0.6899 and we will get our decimal answer of 43.6. Now we want all angles in the circle that have this sine ratio. We know that sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. So to get this other angle, we just do 180 minus 43.6 and that will give me 136.4 degrees. Alright, pause the video and try to get the other two angles on your own. Okay, so if we do sine inverse of negative 0.2899, recall that sine will give us a negative angle because sine inverse returns angles between negative 90 and 90. So the answer that we get from the calculator is negative 16.9 degrees, but we have to remember that we can't give that as our final answer. So negative 16.9 would be down here in fourth quadrant, also over here in third quadrant. So to get those two answers for the one in third quadrant, we will do 180 plus 16.9. And for the one in fourth quadrant, we will do 360 minus 16.9. And our final answers are 343.1 degrees and 196.9 degrees. Okay, time for our last problem. So in this case, hopefully by now, you know that you cannot just divide off a cosine. Um, we need to instead factor it out. So we factor out our cosine of theta, giving us secant of theta minus 1 equals 0. Then we go ahead and we solve each of these two mini problems. First one, when does cosine of theta equal 0? And that's going to happen at, again, we're in radians now, theta equaling pi halves and 3 pi halves. Now note that these are your quadrantal angles. And these are very important because at your quadrantal angles, that is where your x or your y value is equal to 0. And in this case, this is where our x value is equal to 0. So even though these angles are allowed for cosine, they aren't going to be allowed for any function that has an x in the denominator. If we go ahead and finish for secant, we will say, well, when does secant theta equal 1? And this happens at 0, so this would be when theta equals 0. So now we want to check these answers. And we haven't had to check previous answers because either the function was not able to be undefined, like it was a sine or a cosine, or the angles were not quadrantal angles. However, in this case, we have two of those things. Number one, we have secant, and number two, we have quadrantal angle answers. So we want to ask ourselves, is theta equaling pi halves and three pi halves allowed for secant? Is that okay? And since secant is r over x, and at these two angles, x equals zero, the answer is no. Those answers are not okay. So even though they work for secant, they do not work for cosine. And therefore, the only answer that this problem has is zero radians. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.